Hello guys and welcome to the video. So today what we're going to be doing is making an updated guide on the Sath Tattoo Team. Now if you're new to the game, um, you might not know what the Sath Tattoo Team is, which we will get into it in a second. But for anyone who has been a long time subscriber, you're like, wait, you, you've already made a guide on the Sath Tattoo Team. Why are you making another one? And the reason being is because I need to update that uh, other one. Now I made a video a couple weeks back, so a little bit I, I, quite some time actually after the Saf tattoo team which uh talks a bit about Saf and pretty much that's when I had like my awakening moment about hey you know what Saf's a little bit more interesting maybe the way we're running the Saf tattoo team is completely wrong and I address it in that video so uh with that being said we were going to actually address that issue in this video as well and when we do, you'll understand exactly why we're updating this guide. So, back to the new players. If you've never played the game or whatever, and you're like, what is this Saf Tattoo Team? It's a beginner team that you can use to clear Giants B12. Um, it is a pretty fast team when you get it up and running. But, uh... <clears throat> it consists of Sath, the Fire Grim Reaper, this guy right here. Tattoo, the Fire Pixie. Lucian... The Wind Joker, or you could switch it for Fraun, the Light Fairy, or Veramoss, which surprisingly this account doesn't have Veramoss on it. But this is Veramoss right here. But I would recommend getting Veramoss. And two Melias. So the way this team works is that you're supposed to speed tune them in a, in a specific way, which certain units will move in a certain order. And uh, Sath is you know, supposed to be the fastest. He will move, he will supposedly, on paper, use his second skill and place at least one continuous damage debuff, which uh, typically would deal 5% of the enemy's max HP, but due to his passive, deals 10%. The two Melias will go next, each of them placing two dots each, making a total of four dots from the both of them. The reason they do this is because of their passive, which inflicts continuous damage on the target for two turns with every attack. If you attack an enemy who already has continuous damage, places an additional continuous damage debuff for two turns, making a total of five continuous damage debuffs, otherwise known as dots. And then that's when Tattoo comes in and uses her third skill, which attacks all enemies to inflict damage. In addition, blows up or explodes the continuous damage granted on each target to inflict damage that's equivalent to the target's continuous damage. So if the enemy has five continuous damage debuffs, each of them lasting for two turns, when this skill activates, instead of doing 50%, it will do uh, 100% because it it will activate for not only the con it, it won't only activate the continuous damage, but it, it will do it for every turn that the um, continuous damage is there for. So if I have one continuous damage debuff that's on an enemy. Even if it's supposed to only do 10% due to Sath's passive, if it's there for two turns, it'll do 20%. If it's there for three turns, it'll do 30%, and so on and so forth. I think you get the idea. So five continuous damage debuffs, each of them there for two turns, will do 100% of the enemy's HP, pretty much annihilating enemies. But here's the problem with um, that team. Is that the team has Sath going first. And we're going to actually do something real quick. We're going to go here to the arena defense, we're going to do this, um, we'll just do this real quick. We'll place all water units, because we know that Giants B12 consists of water units, we'll have Sath go, right? We'll put Fraun as well. Now the problem with this team and the way it's speed tuned is that Sath is supposed to go first. But there's a mechanic in the game that really uh, messes with this team, and that's glancing. So on Sath's um, entire kit, he has two chances to place continuous damage one from his second skill, and then one from his passive. We'll read his passive out real quick. Increase the amount of damage all allies and enemies receive from continuous damage by two times. Disturb the HP recovery for two turns with a 50% chance and inflicts continuous damage if you attack an enemy on your turn. So theoretically, if he uses his second skill, he has two chances to place continuous damage. Check this out. 
It's odd, but you'll see that only two units out of the four got continuous damage, right? And we'll do this like two more times, right? Just so you can see what the problem is. So again, only two units out of the four. And one last time. So even though he has two chances to place continuous damage, he is missing a majority of the units um, that he's supposed to place continuous damage on. The reason this is, is because he is glancing on his attacks. Glancing hits essentially, um, to put it in its most basic terms, reduce the amount of damage um, your allies deal against enemies. Um, it also prevents them from critting. Obviously, if they're landing glancing, they're not going to crit. But it also prevents them from landing debuffs, no matter what. And you may think, oh, you just have low accuracy. No, he has 100% accuracy on his skills. Not to mention that he is fully skilled up on all of his skills. So if he is missing a majority of the time, that means that your team is not, you know, it's not doing what it has to do because the melees are only placing as many dots as they are because of Sath, right? So if Sath is missing all of his dots, then the second melee goes, she does her AoE, assuming that she lands her hits. When we're talking about all these examples, we're going to assume that the melees are landing their hits every single time. If the Melia lands her attack and uh, she lands all of her dots, she places one um, continuous damage debuff on all enemies. Then the second Melia goes, and then she places two dots because of her passive, which is a total of three continuous damage debuffs, meaning that's 60% of the enemy's max HP when Tattoo decides to take her turn and use uh, Incinerate. This is not too great, because obviously you're wanting to land at least four to five dots. You're landing under four to five dots and this is on a pretty regular basis you saw we just went in there three times and all three times we didn't even get half of the enemies a majority of the time i mean we did get half of the enemies but we either got half of the enemies or lower than half even with 100 percent accuracy but if you speed tune your team a little bit different to have a unit uh, a different unit go first and place continuous damage then you'll notice something really really big so we'll have this Melia, which is faster than Sath, by a little decent chunk, go first. Now you might be like, why would we ever have Melia go first? I mean, you told us Sath goes first. If you continue to read Sath's passive, you'll see why. So we left off on the inflicts continuous damage if you attack an enemy on your turn. The last part of his passive states, if you attack an enemy who already has continuous damage, your attack won't land as a glancing hit. So let's check this out. We're going to do three runs like we did with Sath. Um, and you're going to see just how big of a difference this has. So the melee will go. So she placed three dots on out of the four enemies. Sath will go. Boom. Oh, he killed one of them. But... Lapis went up two extra dots, and then the uh, Undyne got an extra dot. The other one just died, right? We'll just do this a couple more times. So she plays dots on everybody. Boom, he goes in, and now everyone has tons of dots. So... Just one last time, I know this is annoying, but this is just to prove that more dots are landing due to the Melia going first. So you see, everybody except Lapis has at least two to three dots. By the time the next Melia goes, if I had another Melia in here, Lapis would at least have three dots, which is whatever. Um... Megan, the witch right next to the Lapis, would have five dots, which is exactly what I need to do 100% of the enemy's max HP. Same thing with the Undyne. And then uh, Rena would have at least four of the five. So we're noticing here that we're landing the debuffs that we need to more often 
when the Melia goes first. And this Melia, as you can see, is much slower than Sath. Does she really not have... Oh my gosh, this annoys me. <laughs> I get it. I didn't know that she didn't have artifacts. But uh, she's going to go in, and you're going to notice, again, a decrease. If you're like, oh, but that's that's just the team acting normal. We're going to go in with the Melia that's slower than Sath this time. Okay, we're going to heal. I don't want them to kill. So he landed only two dots out of the out of the uh, four. So with this, there are just less dots in general. Lapis has three. Um, Rena only has two for some reason. I guess he resisted one of them. And then Megan and Undyne have one. Just two more times. So he landed dots on two. Uh, wow, he landed. He got his accuracy check two times. So, so now they get the five dots. But you see, Rena and Lapis are the only ones with one dot. So when my other Melia goes, if I had the other Melia here, she would only, Lapis and Rena would only have three dots if they even she even lands the accuracy check. So more often than not, or or, or you're gonna see that when you have Melia going first. You're going to um, land your debuffs more often. So we'll do a run with this updated team right here. So this is the team you're supposed to use. You can swap out Lucian for a Fron if Lucian is just dying too easily. But uh, we'll just let the run go as normal. So she goes first. That's pretty normal. But this is how the team would look like if you uh, ran it like you typically would. It's how it, this is how it should look, right? When you're using this team. But I'm finding that after you know after I switched the uh, Melia to being being faster a long time a long time ago, I found that this team was winning at a much faster rate because they weren't having to sit here in the waves for so long. And I was surviving more. So not only was I more consistent, I was more efficient. And you won't get every single run that's like... I mean, you're, you're going to see some runs that are like this, how we just saw. And that happens. But it's completely fine. Because they, they will still live. So this was one of the actu actually the worst runs out of all of them. But uh, more often than not, South will live, obviously. And that was still a minute. That was still a minute. So, we could do this run one last time, and I think that will be pretty much it. I just wanted to talk about this real quick, because I see a lot of people, and I was, I was, I'll be honest, I was uh, in Summoner's World last night, I was just playing the game, and I saw a lot of people talk, um, talking about it, and I just at least wanted, I, I saw a lot of people who were like, oh no, Melia needs to go first, and I'm just like, what? No, she doesn't. And I realized it's like, not everyone reads the skills um, of all these units, they don't read the skills. So I'm just here to update anyone who just wasn't quite aware of it. They just didn't know that this was how it is, you know. <laughs> but it's just like it took me a little bit. I, I very rarely, um, I'm not going to say I very rarely read the skills. But it's just like sometimes you just don't read the skills completely. It's just like you do like a double take when you read some skills. You're like, wait, what? It does this? How come we haven't been doing it in this way for a while? Or, or you know, that much. So, it was, it was very weird to me. It's fine. And they win. So... It's surprising when you uh, sit there and you read the skill set of these monsters, how quickly you start to change up on like how you ruin them, how you build them, and all that. And that's just kind of what I wanted this video to be about. So I've shown you guys, you know, what the team looks like and which order you should be in. So again, remember, speed tune it to where Sath goes second, not first. I'll show you the runes on my units just so you guys have a good understanding. Sath is 
pretty fast. Um, not too fast, but oh, decently. He's decent, right? Pretty tanky. Tons of accuracy. Here are his artifacts. Boom. Pause it if you need to. Here's Tattoo. I switched Tattoo over onto Shield Runes. These are very helpful. She's on triple HP percent because you do not need her to be fast at all. Um, here's Lucian on some Rage Blade runes. There's his stats. And then here's the Melia. She's a bit faster. I could switch this one around. I or which one is it? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. And then this one, which can use artifacts. I need to switch that last rune around, but she's doing pretty good. So there you go. That's how they're runed. Um, remember, one melee is faster than Sath. Then Sath goes, and then the other melee is faster. You'll notice that you're placing way more dots at a more consistent rate. Your runs are going to be faster. I promise you. Um, but that's kind of all I wanted to do. This was a little quick update video. And it's just something I wanted to do because I felt like some people might go look at my old Sath video and then they might build their team in a specific way. And then when I know that there's a better way to do a team, at the very least, I want to share that information with you all. So uh, that's it. Uh, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.